Welcome to the Selectman's Meeting for the Town of Acton, Maine for October 10th, 2018. First item is salute the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, on approval of the agenda, any objections to moving E up? E? E, 13th Street. Nope. nope. Is there any reason you... Dennis. <laughs> Is that okay with you? Yes, that's okay. okay yeah, okay. Yep, I'm fine. Okay, so someone want to make a motion for the approval of the agenda with the... I make a motion that we approve the agenda with the um, amendment to move E up to the first item under old business. I'll second that. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Call for a vote. All in favor? All opposed. Okay, minutes of the last meeting we don't have, so we'll skip over that. Department heads and committee chair updates. I'm going to start with this. Um, last week we talked about sand beds. I've got a uh, written quote here. Grand statement else. I can't remember last year's quote, but I just want to remove it. <clears throat> um, now, half the town hall probably uh, overheard our little discussion, or my discussion, I would say. And I want to bring to light what the issue is here. Um, starting three weeks ago, I was in Indiana. I got a phone call from the Sluckman um, wanting to know when I was going to do a certain project, the flat ground road and the bit bridge project down on the Hopper Road. Um, at that point in time, um, a little irritated with the idea that I was on vacation. I was told not to be called unless it was an emergency. Um, I probably didn't answer it the way I should have, but answered it, it'll get done. On Thursday of that week, I get a phone call that I'm going to get an email with deadlines of when these projects have to be done. If not, that you guys will take care of them for me. Okay. Um, at that point, I verbally resigned, um, told everybody where they could do whatever they, whatever they want. And, um, when I got back, I was talked to and convinced that that would be only screwing the town of Acton. So I've continued on. I have um, started the flat ground road project. We've had two weeks down there cutting brush, hauling off hundreds and yards of material, installed three culverts, um, worked in the rain, uh, awful hard to grade roads when, there's, when the puddles are full of water, so we haven't got to that point yet. But um, I also had Abbott Hill go down and cut the tree at the bridge and all the brush around it, the big stuff, a start. But I, I was given until October 5th, and I can't remember the other date. So um, I pulled off any other project I had, which was the New Bridge Road project, which was um, something I was trying to prepare for Hot Top for this year. So we pulled off that project to go do the other, start the other two. Um, so now the new bridge road project is going to be a springtime pave. Um, so now I get a phone call tonight wanting to know the status on the bridge because obviously I haven't done enough. And, um, so, um, in this meeting, uh, supposedly we just want to know when it's going to be done. I have given, as far as I know, Ed, you know. I told you that it was done. You know it was going to be done. I told you it was going to be done when everything else, we're, gonna, we're hop, skipping, and jumping. But I guess I'm not doing it fast enough. So at the, in the meanwhile, while I've jumped off New Bridge, gone to Flat Ground Road, uh, taking care of the trees down there, I have um, Abbott Hill Tree Service taking care of, oh, probably 40 trees on the New Bridge Road. And I got four trees down East Shore Drive going. Okay, 
Um, we've been doing numerous other projects, like we fixed the bridge down there on um, Sanborn Road. But uh, I want to know, am I not doing my job? I just need to know that. Because as far as I know, I thought I was elected to pick and choose the projects that I needed to do, okay? And I'm trying to do them in a timely fashion, okay? But we seem to have too many chiefs here. And when I get put in deadlines, I had to jump off other projects because you wanted them done because you threatened me to have somebody else do them, okay? Now, I've got road grading to do. Snow is coming. My priorities are getting flat ground road done, getting my roads graded, getting those trees cut up there before winter, okay? I will get to that bridge when I get to that bridge. But do you feel that you ought to hire somebody else to go do it? The idea between, but behind the uh, deadline of October 5th to remove the sapling shrubs and grass around Roe Bridge was because we knew that water, the, lev the water level would increase and we thought it would be safer to have it done before that time. So and that's you why plan on having somebody go finish that project? Perhaps, I just need to but know that. my biggest concern right now is so that when we, did we start hiring we out can't my have job. an adult conversation without you telling us where to put stuff. And yep. I, have a, I have a concern with that yep. because when budget season comes. I have a comes, concern being called, uh, um, what, what do you call that? Anti-feminist. What do you just call me in there? I didn't call you with anything. You told me I have a, a, a problem with authority with females. That's, that's what you just said. She that's did. because every we time did. I ask you a question, you tell me that I should put something somewhere. No, and I don't believe that that's the way. Okay. Until today. That was twice. Yeah. Okay. But so what I'm saying is I'd like to be able during budget season to have an adult conversation with you without you telling, telling us that you're not, you I know, believe without I was feeling the only like you're one not that doing your job. I came up here during budget season and gave a list of the projects I was doing. And I'm doing those projects. Okay. Now. I'm not sure. I don't have the list in front of me, but Newbridge and Young's Ridge is not on that list. Yes, it is. Okay. Newbridge Road was on that list. Okay. Young's Ridge, I had to go do that because it was washed out. We're not paving Young's Ridge. Now, I also came up here and explained to you three selectmen that I changed. We were planning on doing the Hopper Road first, but I have swapped to go over do the New Bridge Road because you walk that road every day. We're dumping more coal patch on that road than it's worth. Okay, so we figured we'd at least get a heavy shim on that road and take the rest of the money and go down there and do what we can do. Okay, I did say that out of meeting. You guys obviously are not following me. So are we now, am I to expect when you guys feel like having something done, you're just going to go and have my, do my job for me? We have asked, and, and it's been asked more than once or twice or three times or four times about the bridge. About. I'm talking yeah. about, you know, the cleaning up. No, this is not something we want to have to do. But we have asked over the last several months, and, and we've been told, yeah, I'm, I'm getting to it. I, and... So that's the reason why. That's the only reason why. You, you guys gave me two deadlines. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, I, I, I know that names were thrown around of people going down and do that project in one of your side meetings in there. I know that for a fact. Mm -mm. Okay. So um, I, you already contacted somebody else to do my projects. We have not. No. But we, do you is this is something you've known since the spring? Um, bridge report came out that things needed to be dealt with yes and I also no, I mean you just sat up here at this meeting and told you that I wasn't doing any work on the bridge meaning on the concrete and right. all that we until understand the inspection that. Was done. I understand that. Okay. that but the trees have been there for years that needed to yes, be cut yes they have been there for years and yes, so I know that it was They're brought up again now. this spring are they gone now I'm just saying that if we don't put deadlines on them, they don't get done. I'm not doing deadlines with you, okay? If you start hiring my job out, you can keep hiring These it out. These are, it was a, an overhanging dead tree. It's gone. Right. Okay. And yeah. so if, if, a, if something dangerous is happening the to the roads in Acton and we years. are now notified of it, I feel like it's my responsibility to make sure the it gets is done. problem it's not your responsibility. And take care it's my of. responsibility. No, it is. Yeah, the selectmen you, are in charge of the safety of our roads as well as you. And if I find something that's dangerous on the road, yeah. and I, I feel like it should be taken care of. So am I now to expect 
deadlines for projects. For, danger, for things that are brought to our attention that could be a, a potential hazard to our yep. residents. And not as far as I'm concerned. I'm, I'm done with deadlines. I am. I am. I have no problem with authority from females. I'm just going to state that in public here. I, I believe throwing that around loosely is not, that's not cool. That's not cool at all, okay? Um, when I tell someone where to stick it, I don't care if you're male or a female, okay? Um, you, are, you, are, you are overreaching your it's bounds. It's disrespectful. And it's disrespectful I'm to tell me to how to do my job. I'm allowed to ask questions. This is what I do for a living. I've done this for 10 years now. Unfortunately, but I you do work for the taxpayers, right? And they're asking, and they're asking us these questions. The, the, the so how do we answer them? Doing it is your road committee. It's the same no, person. Absolutely no, absolutely not. Her. I was approached at Apple Fest. Yeah, no, sure it was. It's not so, the road committee. Um, the problem we have here is the same people s keep doing the same complaining. I oh. seem to be there's four selectmen here now. Okay, when I walk into the room in your little side meeting there. Um, every it seems to be every other time I'm in there there's people in there the same people over and over and over okay and these people are the ones who want to go to a full-time road commissioner they want to get rid of my position they want to get rid of Scott's position okay you have said you've told me that my job you've told me right out that my job is a conflict of interest that I should not be road commissioner because I own my it's own it's what company. I heard through the DOT when their program so that yeah, okay. Yeah, I didn't make so that how, up. It's what I read. Can you explain to me how that's a conflict of interest? I don't think I you need just, to. What? I don't think I need to. Okay, so you can throw that out there. Accuse me of I doing something <laughs> unethical, okay? Uh, I put a lot of work in this town. I spent a I lot of money. Do. I put a, put yep. a lot of I money into do. my stuff to do this job. Mm -hmm. I got seven employees. Five of them I have only hired just because I for the town work. I put a lot into this, okay? But unfortunately, to keep those seven guys going, I also have to do other stuff. But I always get the stuff that needs to be done now done. Okay, just like the snow plowing, just like the washouts, and everything else. Okay, I'm not doing deadlines with you. Thank you. We did call Scott, I uh, called David earlier today, tonight. Uh, he did come up. Mainly, I wanted to know how he was making out on the bridge. And, and, the, and the projects that we gave him. He gave us an update. He is bouncing back and forth between them. Um, as far as I'm concerned, that's fine. As far as what he, how he does treat the other two selectmen, I'm not all that fine with that. But I'll talk to, I'll talk to Dave on, on my own on that. So, uh, okay. Any other department heads or chairs? No, nope. seeing none, we'll move on. Old business. Okay, we're moving item. E. Pardon? Oh, I was going to say we're going to E first. 13th yes, we Street. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we're moving, moving uh, E up the 13th Street. Um, we had quite a discussion last week about 13th Street, and it was all, I think it was all great. Uh, brought a lot of things to light to us that I don't think we quite understood. So we're here to try to, try to help through this the best we can. Um, I'm going to set some guidelines for tonight, if we will. We did invite our code enforcement officer, Ken Paul, to be here tonight. There is, uh, I believe there's eight questions that were submitted that he was going to hopefully try to answer. He's got all 11. I don't think he knows yet that, you, that he doesn't need to answer those couple. Okay, Just okay. Okay, so the, and the other ones were the last three, correct? Which right, nine, one to 10 eight. 11, okay. So we do have those questions that uh, he's going to, do his best to answer and hopefully we'll have some some direction in all this um, I do want to set some guidelines what it's going to be is Ken is going to we're gonna we're gonna read off the question Ken's gonna answer the question we're gonna move on to the next one uh, what I don't want to get into tonight is a lot of back and forth you know why is this this way how come we can't do it that way um, sort of thing I have not had a conversation with Ken I don't think the other two have no. about this so it's been all the emails, everything that's gone to Ken. I believe you folks have all seen uh, that's involved with the 13th Street. Um, if you have any more questions after this, feel free to get a hold of us afterwards. Feel free to get a hold of Ken. Um, we also have a public comment section coming up that we'll try to take notes at too if, if there's some more things that you want to have answered. But um, personally, I do think that there is a situation down there that needs to be corrected. Um, I don't know the gentleman that owns the place. But I'm, 
I'd like to think that we can come up with something to cure this. So, anything else you two want to add to that? Nope, I think we were going to read the question first so people mm -hmm. at home can see it, and then we'll have Mr. Paul answer. Yep, so come on up, Ken. Okay, these are, it was actually thir or 11 questions that were submitted, and eight of which we forwarded to Ken, or it got forwarded to Ken, but I guess Ken has the other ones. So we forwarded them all to Ken. Okay. And after, and the board. And um, I think that a, that a couple of you got back to me saying that two of the three questions on the back page seem to be directed to the Department of Agriculture, so we weren't expecting that he would really have an answer for them. So, but he may have something to say. I also haven't spoken to him since then, so I don't know what his opinion on those last couple of questions are. Okay. But they didn't seem to be directed towards him, I think was what you, a couple of the selectmen told me. Okay. Okay, so what we have here is a list of questions. Uh, the the uh, questions, it's entitled Concerns of Citizens on 13th Street regarding the property on 773 13th Street, Acton, Maine, 04001. Question number one. Is this going to work okay with you, Ken? We ask a question. You, okay. Question number one reads, who decided the activity on 773 13th Street was agricultural commercial? Was there a check into whether there was a state ID, tax ID number for activities on the property? Were sales records checked? On the property, how does how do you know the goats, chickens, eggs, etc., are not not being sold, or still be not still being sold um, at the property? Technically, that's four questions. Exactly. Question <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, we went out to the site. The selectman got a complaint, and um, it was put to us that it was a priority. So we dropped everything, went out there, went out to the site. Uh, we did see a few sheds. There were the goats were there and the chickens were there. We did notice some stuff. I talked with the property owner's girlfriend at the time. I asked if they were selling the products. She had said no. I confirmed that I'm not going to find it on Facebook, Craigslist, Uncle Henry. She said no. Uh, so at that time, I reviewed it with the uh, DEP, Shoreland Zoning Assistant Coordinator, and he told me you'll never be able to prosecute anything like that. That's an agricultural. That's not commercial. So at that time, I interpreted it as a personal use. So, DEP. Okay. I didn't check to see if there was a state ID out there, tax ID, sales records and stuff like that. I didn't get into any of that. Um, I went back out to the property tonight. To get to that property, I had to drive past at least a half a dozen violations. Some of them were pretty severe that I just haven't had the opportunity to get to yet, but this was a priority. So again, I mean, there's there's other things out there too. Not on this site, the other oh, okay. violations were right. to okay. get to there. Okay. Okay, the next question. Can we go on the next one? Sure, go ahead. We'll take turns. Why, wasn't, why hasn't the unpermitted goat shed within 100 feet of the lake not been removed? Are there fines being levied for this situation? So we sent the owner a letter um, at the direction of the selectmen to get a letter out the very next day. It's not the best letter our department has ever sent out. I wish we had more time to craft it a lot better. Mm -hmm. uh, we gave him a time frame, a short amount of time frame. I met with the property owner tonight. He's got half of the stuff out. He's going to reorganize and get the rest of the stuff out. Um, levy and fines, that's our last resort. That's if we have a property owner that's not working with us, is extremely uncooperative. Uh, if you guys remember the clear cut issue we had on West Shore Drive last mm -hmm. year, he was as uncooperative as that you can get almost. And we didn't even find him. We just want compliance with it. We're not out to find people and stuff like that. If you're working with us, we'll work with you. Uh, the property owner uh, was on site tonight with him, and he had stated uh, it looks like we'll be in total compliance by November 3rd. And that seemed reasonable to me. Okay. All right, so number three, why is there still manure on the property within 250 feet of the lake? Are there fines being levied for this situation? No on the fines, and there was a very small amount just from the animals out there today. I didn't see any piles or anything, just in one of the pens, and he plans on relocating that pen where the, um, it's, it's more of a sloped land, and it's just up against the fence. It's more bedding and stuff like that. It, it seemed uh, that most of the area, the only area 
is in the pens that it's packed down and stuff and there's a good 75 80 foot buffer between the pen and the water and when we first went out there we noticed that that was the first thing we we observed was the the buffer it was a really good buffer vegetated down and through there and we didn't notice any order that day and i really didn't notice any order today okay gotcha. fourth question historically this property has been used as a residence now agricultural use has been added to the property. Is this legal? Ordinance 1.4.11.5 discusses change in use. Change of use would really be if you're getting into a commercial operation. This is, this is a minor use of the property. The, the property still is residential. Okay. okay. Okay, regarding the permit request submitted for accessory structures at 773 13th Street, does Ordinance Provision 5.1.1 apply? This includes a statement that no structure shall be located closer to the shoreline than the principal structure and only a structure of 80 square feet can be allowed for storage of yard tools and similar equipment. This provision in the ordinance mirrors item 8 on page 30 of the main shoreland zoning handbook as an optional provision for the towns to strengthen their ordinances. Doesn't apply. Do you want more in-depth or is that good? Could you in-depth like a little bit? Yeah, please. <laughs> yeah. um, we have all we can do to enforce an ordinance that's legally put in our, to our ordinance book and it's black and white and you can read it. It gets very gray. Now if you start grabbing stuff from guidelines and stuff that on our ordinance, um, we can't enforce that at all. The guidelines are what we, we use to put into our ordinance. That shed provision is for somebody that has no room whatsoever on their property to have a shed. Um, so if your lot, say, is 100 feet deep and you're supposed to be 100 feet away from the water, you would be able to have at least a shed and be within that 100-foot zone. And we put that in four or five years ago, maybe, so people with these small lots could have a small shed to put their gasoline and stuff like that, um, so they're not storing it in their house and their garages and things. So if you have room that is compliance to put a shed, you can have three, four, five, as long as it meets the setbacks. Okay. Is it my turn? Mm -hmm. Was there a survey completed when the permit to relocate the property at 773 13th Street was granted? That would help in deciding whether the current unpermitted structure is, an, is on an adjutant Adj I can't say it. Adjacent. Adjacent, thank you very much. Landowner's property. It wasn't our policy to use the surveys back then if they were getting 100 feet away from the water. It is now. We were using the surveys much more. Um, apparently, there's a lot line dispute there. He thinks it's someplace. The neighbor thinks it's another. Talking with the property owner today, he's going to relocate it to the what the abutter thinks is his property line, so it's going to be in compliance with what they both think it is. Okay. Okay, seven. Article 5.2.2 says that there should be no tilling or soil, no tilling of soil, and Article 5.2.3, uh, point five, excuse me, uh, states that no Grazing may happen within 100 feet of the lake has been broken. What actions are being taken by the town? There's no tilling out there. There is a pen, which you'd trample down in there, and it's very limited. Uh, again, when he relocates the sheds and the, the pen, it, they're all going to meet the 100-foot setback. Okay. Okay. okay, my question eight's cut off. Um, what, has, what has been done? or will be done regarding the noise and odor from 773 13th Street property. Do ordinance numbers 5.11.2 and 5.11.3 and 5.11.21B2 apply? Those are all good neighbor standards for uh, proposed development. That would be um, any of the commercial uses we use when it goes through planning board. We would look at that for planning board uses. So that doesn't apply. Okay. And the other two, uh, the other three questions, I guess, are more for Maine Agricultural. So, did you have any answers to those questions, or did you just kind of do you have anything pertinent on those? No. Okay. Okay, we'll leave those for the Maine Agricultural uh, Department of Agriculture. 
9, 9, 10, and 11 need to be directed there? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, um, okay. That answers the questions. So the property owner is attempting to comply? Yep. So we deal with a lot of property owners. Some of them are difficult, very difficult. This property owner doesn't seem to be. He's willing to work with us. He needed a little bit more time. And if anybody's willing to work with us, we'll work with them as much as they can. Um, I understand he's working 60 hours a week. It's apple season. He, he volunteers in some of the orchards in town. So um, I'm not seeing an erosion issue from the pens to the lake. Now, of course, there could be some invisible nitrates or, or phosphorus or something that I'm not seeing, but they have to go through 75 feet of vegetated buffer to get into the lake. So I don't see it as an imminent threat. It's not a public health issue. I know there were concerns about the dead fish and this and that. Those were all addressed early on by the Department of Agriculture and DEP. Both of them went out there and sent us a letter that they didn't have concerns with it. They, it was um, the oxygen level at the lake. That's a small cove, very small inlet, and it's stagnant water. At that time of year, they're expected to uh, have depleted oxygen levels in, in an area like that. Okay. Anything else you want to add? I guess I'd just like to make a statement to address the taxpayers that have always supported our department for what we've been doing July, August, and September the last three months, in addition to I mean, this issue here. Um, we've done uh, 311 inspections took uh, 1,265 phone calls, 1,500 emails. That's not counting the walk-ins and the realtors that we're getting. Uh, we've got a dozen other complaints. Most of them are related to the gravel pits. Some of them were out there at 5 o'clock in the morning trying to catch these trucks that are, that are uh, we're getting solid complaints on with those issues. Uh, through the planning board, we've done a seven-lot subdivision. We've got a 25-lot subdivision coming through. We've done four conditional uses, uh, property maintenance, wedding barns, 56-lot campground, and a gravel pit as well, too. We had the level of service last year through our department, went through a special town meeting to get an extra person. We had a person for a month, didn't seem to work out. We got another person, and that person's on medical leave at this time. We really have never had that extra person at all. If we're going to continue to need this level of service, I think in my budget next year, I'll be looking for a full-time full person down there to help us down there. Um, the, the volume of work we're doing is, is pretty tremendous. And that was just for three months. That was June, July, and August. That's not bringing in uh, July, um, August, and September. Uh, revenue so far is a little over 46000 And I mean, if I add October into that, it's going to be a tremendous lot more. If you talk to any contractor right now, they can't even tell you they'll even call you back this year. That's how busy they are. We're just as busy as them as well. And I understand that the taxpayers do pay their taxes and inspect the level of service. We have people paying two, three, four thousand dollars for a permit and expect they demand the level of service a lot higher too as well. So I, I understand both sides of it, but there's only one and a half of us. And when we brought that new person on last year for 20 hours we cut Brenda five hours so we only added 15 hours and if you're trying to train somebody for 15 hours all you're doing is just catching the errors and stuff like that so we've never got back up to staff yeah, one, um, qu one question I did have is do you feel as though you need more more manpower and more help yeah so and no. clearly to keep the level and if you look at the amount of inspections we do we do a lot more than a lot of other communities because we are looking at the electrical we are looking at gas and propane a lot of towns don't look at that but to me that's fairly important um, as, as being here for 20 years I've seen when I've missed a you know five dollars worth of flashing and it cost somebody thirty thousand dollars to fix the deck that leaked and stuff like that so we're trying to be more proactive and catch things like that because we don't know who's going to own that we're not we're not here for the person paying for the permit of the contractor. We're here for the house. The house is here for 100 years in town. And we don't know if it's one of your kids may end up with the house or a, an elderly couple. We don't know. And we try to make sure safety is a priority. So we're in a position to chase junkie yards or, or make sure the level of safety in these houses uh, meet at least a bare minimum standard. So we're, we're trying to work both on that and 
roughly in those three months, I worked 79 hours beyond my um, salary based for, for free. Yeah. And if I could work more or something, we could get more done, but that, that's, we're maxed out. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm willing to stay if there's questions. If we don't answer them tonight, you guys are going to get another wave of people next week or something like that. I'll stay and answer if you guys want, or if not, okay. we'll come one, back. One question week. I have, and I don't know whether it was answered down through here, is do you feel that is, a, is it a commercial, is it zoned commercially, and is that property being used commercially, I guess, yeah. is the two? Um, the toughest thing to say, because everyone's going to hear it. Our office is mostly smoke and mirrors. We're going to try to get you into compliance with threats that we're going to court. I could never bring this case to court. There's no way we would ever win this case. We have a 100% batting average with the 10th, 10th District Court now and Superior Court. We've never lost anything. We have a lot of respect with the courts up there that we bring true cases through. We'd never, ever, ever. If he, if he hired an attorney, he'd eat us up. Okay. I, I just have a question. Yep. When do when does um, the amount of pets become agricultural animals? That's funny because I did some research and New Hampshire DES has a prohibition on hoof and fowls within the shoreland zone. Maine DEP does not. One of the first inspections I did here was a shed that was going to house 30 migrant workers. And I said, no way, you can't do that. Department of Agriculture straightened me out really quick on, yes, we can, that's how we do it in Maine. Agriculture is a huge business in Maine. And if you go after blueberries, apples, and potatoes, and now pot maybe, because they're trying to be lumped in with everybody as well too, um, you've got a big battle. They've got a lot of lobbyists. They've got so many exemptions in the building codes. They don't need to meet standards. They're really exempt. So goats. Um, I, that'd be a battle with Department of Agriculture. Now we could look at it and say, let's put an ordinance in that says um, no goats and fowls, no hoof and fowls within the shoreland zone. Currently, this situation would be legally existing non-conforming. It wouldn't count for him. Maybe the ordinance could be dra drafted retroactive, or if one dies, he can't replace it, or something like that. It's it's a neighborhood, and when you're in a neighborhood, it's tough. It's, it's shoreland zoning lots. They're 50 by 100. They're not very big. Um, the campground we just did, a minimum standard, 50 by 100 lots in a campground. So that's, that's when you're dealing with these small lots. The neighbors, it's tough. If you've got a good neighborhood, they all get together, but it doesn't take much. And then there's a riff and a wave. And I always joke that I've got over 3,000 deputies in town. Our phone rings off the hook when anybody sats a chainsaw or anything. We get a tra and they've all been the people that was told, no, you can't have that. No, you can't do this. And why is he doing this? And, and we get emails and constantly around the clock of what's he doing, how's he doing it. So one of the things we're trying to do is more efficient downstairs. We've got all our permits on log now, and it's a searchable database. All our phone records come in. They're all recorded also on the, so we can search those database. And we'll find in a lot of people, when they're calling and leaving a complaint, will say, I searched the database on the website, and I see he doesn't have a permit. Well, we only go back to July, and the permits could be for a couple of years. So that's also helping us out a tremendous lot downstairs as well. Okay. You have anything? I don't. He's okay. pretty much answered everything I... Okay. Do we want to open this up to some questions? And Ken's brought we're that gonna up. Wait? We were going to wait till the end? Or? Well, I mean, we're in it now, but... I uh, need to have Ken wait if, yeah. to public comment if... Right. Okay. Is there a spokesperson or someone from the 13th Street that could come up and address? I mean, like I said, I don't want to get into a big <laughs> argument back and forth. And I know you won't, I, I, you won't Bill. I so I'm gonna have him take my chair well, once you sit okay. here and answer questions, Ken, and I'll. Oh I'll sure. I, I don't. I don't think I have any. Um, okay. Need for answers. I just want to make some statements, if I could, sure. um, and then from there you can go on. I on the whether it's commercial agriculture. I mean, um, we know there were websites. We know things were sold. The reason we asked about the tax, tax ID was because my wife is a commercial artist. And she sells, and she has to have a tax ID, and, that, and that's how you know it's commercial. Um, for example, it, I realize he pulled down all of his websites, and if Red's Apple Farm Smiths pull them down, would they still be a commercial agriculture? Mm -hmm. 
So that, that's a big open wound that could end up with a lot of problems as far as trying to legally enforce it. And then the second one is on the 8th of August, I think, or thereabouts, Ken went out to the property when there were complaints about water uh, having high coliform counts and the state came the next day. I think the forestry guy and the um, um, a DEP people came on the 9th. Now, at that time, all those un Un, uh, were, all those sheds were not permitted and weren't proper at that time. And nothing, they were clearly, one of them was clearly within 100 feet and nothing was done. And clearly the manure was there. And our ordinance says very clearly it has to be 250 feet from the lake. Very clearly. No questions, no ifs, no ands, no buts. And there's no way that that can be done in this property because he doesn't have 250 feet to do it. So that's kind of the way we view that as a group. So the 100 feet thing. Um, is there the 250 thing is the big thing though the manure right now the manure I'll, I'm going to try to find a picture for you um, of where the manure is being stacked um, and and it's put into a, a shed I got to find it I got so much stuff here pardon my nervousness it's okay um, don't be nervous it's put into a trailer and left beside 13th Street and for the last two weeks it was sitting in this trailer and right next to the property owners next door and right next to our street, which is 13th Street, and everybody can pass around. That's a picture of that. And this is also a picture of where the sheds are taken from the next door neighbors as well. I only have one copy of that, so okay. I can pass it nope, around. That's fine. Everything good. should be directed to us as well anyway. Yeah, okay. So. All right, sorry about that. That's okay. Uh, but anyway, it doesn't, it doesn't meet the... Uh, our code for setback of 250 feet, it's very clear that that's what has to be. And also, in Agriculture 521, it says, all spreading or disposal of manure and sewage sludge shall be accomplished in conformance with manure utilization guides published by the Maine Department of Agriculture on November 1, 2001. I've printed those guidelines out, and I'm going to give them to you, and I'm going to give you the entire nutrient book. But the basic guidelines that we want to quote is, the uh, not the owner's private water supply if it's an upslope it can be a hundred feet from it downslope 300 if you look at where i was standing it's always downslope and it's about 25 feet from that guy's water then it also talks about property line um, it, the manure can't be within 100 feet of the property line or 200 feet if it's downslope and as far as residents it can't be within 300 feet of a neighbor upslope and downslope those are the guidelines and that's what our ordinance says so I'm going to give you that set of guidelines. Uh, I put it onto that page so you can read it, but the entire guidelines are there okay. for the state. Okay, thanks. That's clearly in, in violation um, of our ordinance of 521. Um, we have really problems with um, water quality was our first complaint. Odor was our second complaint. We have a noise complaint. Those goats are within about 30 feet of the neighbor's window. I don't know. If, have you been there to that site? I, I haven't. Have if no. you go to the site, I'd like you to do that and walk on the next to a neighbor's property and look where the goat pen is currently and look where the others are compared to those standards. And he's trying to sleep in the summer with his windows. He has to close them. Um, we've really been subjected to smoke, um, which we talked about, other things. It's just unlivable to be there with this situation going on all the time. I mean, like the manure at the top of the street, now that's, that's ridiculous. Okay. Um, you know, we've got rats now, we've got health issues with my wife has allergies and when he, it, it's just awful. Okay. And so that's our, that's my my take on on these 5.11 clearly says and thank god our ordinance are very difficult for people our zoning are very strong stronger than the state ones it clearly says you cannot put a structure between your residence and the lake if you're in the shoreland zone it's right blatantly says that please read it and that's all i have okay thanks thank you and response well, I respect Mr. Gannon for being extremely knowledgeable, but if you've ever looked at an ordinance, there's nothing that's clean and easy to read. Um, to pick it apart, 5.2 talks agricultural. That's the heading is agriculture, and that's where the no tilling within 100 feet and, and the storage. Look up the definition of agricultural. It's the production and keeping of maintenance for sale or lease. 
instantly right there. And again, I treat this as if I've got to deal with a judge on this. I'll try to get as much as I can with my smoke and mirrors, but this has been brought into this forum, so I don't have that leverage anymore. Luckily, he's telling me he's coming into compliance with those issues there. So the heading instantly is, is driving me towards commercial. Um, the accessory structure he's talking about, again, that's if you have no place to put the shed whatsoever. And we put that in there from the DEP guidelines, like I said, four or five years ago, for when people can't find a room to put the shed and they can't meet the 100-foot setback, we'll allow you, say your camp's 40 feet from the water, you can be 50 from the road, 10 from the side, we'll, get, we'll find you a spot to put your shed so you can at least have a place to put gasoline and stuff like that. That's the intention of 511. I know it's real easy to start grabbing different pieces and not read the whole paragraph and understand the whole thing, but um, I've had the ordinance shoved down my throat so many times. I, I think it's, I've got a good concept of it and how it would play out in court. And again, we, we just try to get compliance out of people and that's our last resort we want. Uh, Jack Kelly, I'm here for uh, Muslim Lake Region Association. I got a question for the selectman and the uh, code enforcement officer. Uh, we're going to be doing professional water testing down there in Hubbard's Cove. Yes. And what are you going to do if, I, if we come back with some readings? And I told you before that you'll get the readings that we get. What are you going to do about it if you get some high readings? I guess my response to that is, is going to be that we are hoping to get a cure to this before we get high readings. Because I just as soon not see the high readings, I'd like to see it. <coughs> not impact the lake at all so um, take one more my first question is miss Miller you mentioned that um, if there's a dangerous condition in act and and there's reported to you you need to act and last week well we were asked to get evidence about the rats so after the meeting we trapped a rat uh, we reported it to Vicki Erickson, the health inspector. She asked us to get video and pictures. We did that, and we sent it to her. She advised me that she has forwarded it to Ken Paul, and I'd like to hear what is going on with that. Um, and I'd also like to get a better understanding of what the, uh, the livestock are being defined as. I've heard personal use, I've heard pets, but I can't find a definition for personal use, and I can't find anything that indicates that livestock are pets. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Again, I'll back up to the prior question too, as far as if they do get high readings, what are we going to do? Try to narrow down where the source is coming from. Uh, if we yeah. want to start looking at some of the erosion issues that's going to give us some of the higher readings, that would be great to, to start narrowing it down. And the lake associations have done a tremendous job with the youth conservation groups. But again, I mean, this site here had a house 30 feet from the water eight, 10 years ago, and he's rebuilt it and revegetated from the house all the way down to the lake. As far as the rats, I'm not a rat expert, but I can tell you, I live in the middle of 30 acres. My closest neighbor is 3,000 feet away. I had a rat at my house a month ago. He was faster than me, so he got away, but I'm not sure. Of course, they're coming into a food source, and if you keep the source contained, then you're going to eliminate the problem. My rats were under my bird feeder, so that's, that's my issue there. So I can't say that those rats were coming to or from or anything like that, but... Um, I think if you ask any hardware store right now that the volume of rats and rodents have increased yep. tremendously, tremendously yep. the, the between mice, mice ch yeah. squirrels, yep. chipmunks, and rats. I hate killing things for any reason. There's no reason for it, but I've got a five-gallon bucket half filled with water with uh, sunflower seeds in it with a little ramp that goes up. I got 15 <laughs> mice and seven chipmunks in one day. Yeah, it's yeah. bad this year. Inside yeah. my house, it, it started. Mean, it is tough to yeah. get. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's idea. epidemic on that. So. Yeah, yeah, they can't get out. I like that idea. Bucket. It's <laughs> known as my suicide bucket. Yeah, but, there you go. Um, hopefully, again, working with Mr. Sweeney, he's mm -hmm. willing to come into his compliance of that. I think you're always going to hear the goats. 
again, I've been driving by it for 20 years now. I've never smelt the odors. Nobody's ever called until just recently. Of course, burning the manure probably isn't the best way to deal with it, but I think he can use some best management practices to keep it in a trailer, go to that dump every week, um, keep it into a um, containment with some taps and things like that. Um, usually when I'm dealing with an issue, somebody calls and starts complaining about a deck. They're not concerned about their neighbor's deck. There's another reason behind it. And when you're in this neighborhood, there could be some, and they've all been there for a long time, there could be some past history we're not familiar with. I'm not sure of it, but uh, I just hope the neighbors can all get together, and if uh, he does what he says he's doing in the time frame he does, hopefully that'll take care of it. Okay. I do have a concern with the um, location of manure in reference to residential wells. What's the setback on that for if your well is installed properly, and I don't know if it's a dug well or a point or, or a true drilled well with a sealed casing. If it's a true drilled well with a sealed casing, I wouldn't have a problem going right through a, a leach field with it if it's installed properly. I know we're having problems with this well out here again with the salt getting into it, the contamination, but um, you need to test your water and monitor it and, and get your readings, have it done professionally. So we know what you, and at least have a baseline. If it tests positive today and a few years from now, um, that could be the issue, and the, the owner could be held liable for it if he's found that it, it's from him, is his, his contamination. Okay. Okay. Do you know how big the lot is that he has there? Five, 6,000 square feet, maybe. It's, it's one of the bigger ones in the shoreland zone. Okay. So he could be up to 7,000. Good. I was just uh, wondering what goats are defined as. Are, are they domesticated animals now in the state of Maine? You see them everywhere. There's people that pot belly pigs at their house. I know. I just didn't know if it was. I see them hiking out in the woods with people. I know. Yeah. I just didn't know if it was something that was, you know, like written down. Like just you said, the, the state looks at agriculture a lot differently than they, even like the, than the state of New Hampshire looks at it. So, okay. Um, just one second before you start. Is there anyone else that would like to come up that hasn't been up? Okay, I'll take one. Um, sure, come on up. Just before we start repeats. And I'm only going to allow one repeat, just you, and that's going to be it. And then we're going to move on here. My name is Colton Sweeney. I am the property owner on 773 13th Street. Um, I know there's a three minute cutoff. I do. Not in this case. Okay. No. Uh, it will be under five minutes. Yep. Um, after attending the meeting on October 2nd and watching the me meeting on September 18th, I have a few things that I would like to say. First of all, not once has any neighbor come to us with any complaints. It is pretty unfair for our neighbors to get upset with things going on without even letting us know they are having issues. Oh. You just, just yeah, just turn the mic a little. Off. There you go. Thanks. All of our goats we have raised as babies uh, in our living room, feeding them bottles eight, ten times a day. Uh, my son snuggled them for hours at a time. They are as important members of our family as our dogs are. We have some neighbors who come over and bring food scraps for the chickens and also visit the goats. We have some neighbors whose grandchildren come over to see the goats and play with them on a regular basis during the summer when they're up. I even gave a milking demonstration to four neighbors just this past summer and let them milk themselves. In regards to the complaints of water quality, July of 2016, DEP and Department of Agriculture came to our property and tested the water. In 2016, there was no evidence found that our property was contaminating the lake water. Again, on August 8th of this year, both DEP and Department of Agriculture came to our property. The water was tested again at both the beach and the end of the dock after Spencer White at 784 13th Street and his realtor, Elias Thomas, sent in a water sample. I have a copy of the report. You guys have a copy of the report. I've got the results here. I'm not going to read it. It's just a waste of time. I believe everybody's seen the reports. Can't hear him still, I'm so. No. Yes. I'm speaking fairly loud. I'll try to do better. Um, the only thing I will add is uh, the report also states it is important to note that the department does not set standards for total coliform bacteria, only E. coli bacteria in fresh water. 
Coliforms can be generated from a variety of naturally occur occurring organic matter, whereas E. coli is considered more um, uh, indicative of warm-blooded animals, including humans. The report concludes with, and I am directing, and I am directly quoting this from the report from DEP, Matt, the supervisor from the Department of Agriculture who came uh, from DEP. And I did not find any problems with the goat and chicken pen at 773 13th Street that would lead to the conclusion Hubbard Cove was being contaminated by runoff from the pens. The yard, the yard showed no signs of contaminated runoff. This is two separate times DEP has taken water samples and checked the property without any issues found either time. Therefore, this concern that our property and animals are contaminating the lake water should be null and void and we should stop being harassed. In regards to the complaints about the burning, it has been stated in the previous meetings that there is no state violation in burning manure. But to clarify, what we were burning was excess hay that the goats did not eat in bedding that we would rake up uh, that we would rake up to keep it from building up in the pens. Again, nobody met, ever made any complaints, sorry. Again, nobody ever made any complaints to us that they were having issues with this. On September 4th, we came home to a courtesy card on the door from Ranger Gregory uh, Malogi with the Maine Forest Rangers requesting we give him a call. I called him back an hour later. We called him back that evening and he made us aware of the complaints of the burning and stated it was hindering the neighbor's enjoyment of the property. We immediately stopped burning hay waste. We did not burn again until Friday the 28th when we were burning debris from the two sheds and one small chicken coop that we had taken down, which we had a burning permit for, which I posted in two separate areas on the property because I knew people would complain. Um, and code enforcement was even aware that these sheds were being demolished. Uh, we can understand not wanting constant burning from our cleanups and cease doing so as soon as we were made aware that there was a complaint. But to say that all burning on our property should not be permitted for reasons such as it affects someone's allergies also means all burning by any neighbor would do the same, i.e. campfires all summer long. And if you're going to complain about this, I will call the forest ranger every time there's a campfire all summer long. In regards to statements by neighbors at 791, the neighbors at 791 13th Street, which is right next door, stated during the last meeting that they brought the property in 2016. We had one or two goats and since have added to that and added chickens. In 2016, when they brought the property, we had nine goats and 15 chickens. Currently, we are down to 16. Uh, I'm sorry, currently we are down to six chickens. The goats have always served a purpose, providing milk for our family, and the chickens have been a source of eggs for our family as, our, uh, for our family as well. Our animals are our pets and a source of education and entertainment for our son. None of the, this has changed since they brought the property. In regards to the statements by neighbor at 784, the neighbor at 784 13th Street, Spencer White, referred to me as a bully at the last meeting. The irony in the statement is that I have never had any contact with almost any of the people making these complaints beyond waving as we pass each other on the road. Before an altercation with Spencer on the 23rd, he and I have not talked since 2014 when he initially listed his camp for sale and we spoke to him about purchasing a portion of his non-buildable lot for him. On September 19th, Spencer had his land surveyed, which did not match the survey we had done in 2013 which I have copies of. He had wooden stakes placed in our yard. We removed the wooden stakes in our yard and started making arrangements to have corner posts come back to repost the property line as their survey had found it to be in 2013 and contact a real estate attorney, a, attorney to deal with the property line issue. On September 23rd, Spencer, upset over the stakes being taken down, not only removed posted signs we had posted on trees at the end of our driveway, but he stopped in front of my house three times in 10 minutes, stopped his car, and yelled at me out the window that I had to put the stakes back or he was going to sue me. At 16.54 hours, I contacted Sanford Dispatch before Spencer ever 
called Sanford Dispatch and filed the complaint that he took down the signs. I also have a copy of this call log in case anybody is curious to see that I called first. And because of where I work, I said, maybe you should call the state police so there can be no, oh, he's friends with this person, he's friends with that person. And all that can be, can be I don't have the actual call log stating that I said that, but it's on record, it's on tape. But I do have the call log that shows me calling first. Um, Deputy Frazier responded and Spencer was told it was a civil, civil issue and had to handle it in court, which should have been how we handled the property line dispute, dispute from the beginning. Not yelling at me, stopping in front of my house. You know, I have a five-year-old. My five-year-old does not need to hear some adult yelling out of his window that he's going to sue me and he's um, for me to put the stakes back. Um, he was very aggressive and I don't need to deal with that. The bottom line here is that we feel completely harassed. We understand that neighbors don't like us having goats. We are sorry they don't like it. We have tried to be respectful neighbors by not keeping roosters, hauling all of our manure away rather than composting it, and cleaning out our goat buildings weekly to help with the smell issues. We stopped burning the wasted hay the day we were told that there was a complaint about it and immediately went to code enforcement before I received a certified letter from code enforcement. I went to code enforcement. Um, if our neighbors had issues, especially things that can be easily addressed, they could have at any time said something before wasting many hours and tax dollars on state and town resources. The situation at this point has become out of control and is honestly beyond repair. I've heard it said multiple times during the last two meetings how this road is like a family and how close everyone is, yet not one single person ever thought to come to us and address any kind of issue. Our neighbors on this road are not concerned with the numerous other code violations on properties, including properties owned by the people here at this meeting, but are using alleged code violations as a way to bully us out of the neighborhood and our property that has been owned by the Sweeney family for three generations. At this point, we are concerned for the safety of our family and our pets. I dread going out every morning expecting to find poisoned dead goats because that's what I think these neighbors are capable of. This group of malicious people have made us nervous about having our family and particularly our son even at home. We have people on our property without permission filming us and instigating issues. Spencer admitted at the last meeting to to be waiting for me to return on the 23rd. We have one of the neighbors from 791 13th Street on Friday, September 28th, walking around our goat pen, which has been posted a week or two ago. I'm gonna, I'm gonna interrupt you right there. Um, I don't wanna get into any more of that. You've stated your case on that. Um, I, I don't wanna get into any of that because it's, it's gonna end up in a bad situation. Okay. Um, I got one question for you, well, can and I that's just finish? simply can quick. I? It's my one question for you is how many goats do you have? It's one thing I haven't heard. 16. 16 right now. Okay, thanks. And six of them are babies that should be leaving this week. Go. Oh. You said leaving? <laughs> leaving. Yeah. So you got 10 big ones. Leaving. Okay. Okay. Um, like I said, I don't want to get into any more debate about neighbors and whatnot you've stated your case on that and we appreciate that um do you have anything else to add that might i do okay um the main farm bureau has also contacted us we did not contact them and they are very willing to help us resolve this unfortunate issue at hand and they have lots of resources and uh okay thank you for the time thank, thank you. you thank you um mm -hmm. I don't think I'm going to take any more questions on this. Uh, we've been around and we've, we've covered a lot of territory, heard a lot of things. Um, I don't know if Ken has anything else to add or anything else he wants to look into on this. Um, I'm sure he probably will be looking into some other things on it. But uh, I think at this point, I think we're all set. Yeah, we'll it sounds we'll like he's complying with what um, code he's, enforcement yeah, is, working is with you. Um, yeah. requesting and yeah. Are we not having any more public comments to that?
not, not you, right can, now. you can bring them up under the public comment section, which would be a three minute limitation on it. So, um, I mean, I think we've heard, we've heard an awful lot on this from both sides uh, tonight. And I think it's, it's all good. I think I want to go down and see the site personally. And I think the other two probably do. Mm -hmm. yep. um, I mean, we're not judging jury on this. And I, I, it sounds like he's working hard to correct some issues that he had and working with the, uh, what was it, the State Agriculture? Far Maine Farm Maine Bureau. Farm, Maine Farm Bureau, uh, which I think is hopefully going to be, a, that, that sounds like a good source as well. So, Ken, I'll give you one last thing. Anything else you want to add? Uh, if you're going out there, I'd wait until the date is in compliance. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. 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 Yep. Yep. I can definitely see on the burning side, uh, you're burning the hay. The hay has urine in it. It does have feces in it. It's going to, it's going to have an odor. So, um, he said he's not doing that anymore. So, but Ken's going to be on it. He's going to be keeping a close eye. He's got until a date in November to commit a compliance. So, I just want to add that I, I think that all of you guys are nice people and, you know, on both sides. And I, f I feel like we should try to try a little better to get along and work with each other. And I don't know. I don't, I don't like to see conflict. No. But, so. you know, this, this is where it is. So, thank you. Okay. Item A, generator bid. So quite a few Thank of these um, we're going to table until next week of your approval. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So uh, generator bids is one, nothing new. Okay. Utility box bids? We are waiting to award the truck bid. Okay. Uh, Canal Bridge? Uh, Canal Bridge, just quickly, I am in the process of trying to reach out to the town administrator in Wakefield. Um, as I, I mentioned, I got an interesting mm -hmm. call from someone from the state of Maine uh, regarding Acton. Um, assisting or being part of these conversations. So I'll have okay. more on that next week. Okay. Uh, animal control officer position. I have one person that has reached out saying they're interested, but I haven't got them in the building yet, but I'm working okay. on it. Okay, it's better than nobody. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, uh, EWE took care of or are in the works of. Uh, town report. Uh, as soon as the tax deadline comes and goes, I'll have a draft for you. Okay. Great. Mary Grant pumpkin carving. I believe I saw Mr. Dick Neal walk in, and maybe we can borrow him for a minute. Um, Barbara, I know you're watching, and I know I cut you off when you called me a few minutes before 5, but it was such short notice. Um, but the good news, I think, on that is that they are, Mr. Neal, planning on having the event October 20th, as I understand it. Uh, Barbara has gotten some calls with some volunteers, and I know the few people on the committee are, are working towards it. So October 20th, the pumpkin carving is a go. Uh, they're still looking for people and donations, so um, you can certainly reach out to Mr. Neal after the meeting or if you want Barbara's phone number, uh, give me a call directly and I'll set you up with her. So um, okay. it's like a go for October 20th. What time, Mr. Neal? Four to I think, uh, four. four. Yep, four to seven. So don't, um, pumpkins, food, any donations uh, like that would be great. Okay. Truck bids. So I met with the fire chief uh, in regards to the different bids that came in, uh, and he is uh, comfortable with the low bid and the, uh, which was a Rundle Ford, um, and like looking for a motion to approve the bid from a Rundle Ford for forty-eight thousand six hundred and thirty-seven dollars. Thank you. That was, if you recall, by I think it was four to six thousand dollars was difference, and the highest was up to ten. But he did review it, um, a Rundle, to make sure that everything was on there that he was looking for, and he was comfortable with that bid. Okay. Just going down through the, the bid specs that they put in. Yeah, I had him review it to yeah, make sure I mean, there's nothing I just, missing. I was just glancing down through these. That is a really, really good price for what this truck is. Yeah. It's a 550 Ford. I uh, believe it's crew cab. Yes, it is a crew cab, four-wheel drive, diesel. To buy something like that for 48000 is is a good price. So, do I have a motion? I make a motion. We sign the bid for... Um $48,637 with the Rundle Ford. And I'll second that. Who would have seconded any of the discussion? Mm -hmm. no? Call for a 
Call for a vote. All in favor? All opposed. Okay. So I'll give them a call tomorrow and start getting yep. the paperwork going. Okay, Robridge. Um, the board instructed me to put this on there in regards to the yep. time frame and prior discussion. So I'm looking for direction, if any. I'd like to, do you have anything you want to discuss on that? I'd like to table it. And I'd like to table it. Table it. Okay. So bring it back next week. Sure. Yep. Yep. Okay. New business propane contract. So last week you awarded the bid to Down East Energy. Um, I have reviewed everything, uh, the dollar sixty-five for the propane and the uh, number two, everything in the contract is the same. This is a prior company okay. and the numbers are as um, they submitted. So I just need a signature on it because you technically awarded it last week. Yep. That's all you need is a signature on it now? That's it. Okay. Might as well sign it. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Cool. Okay. Public comment. Anyone My timing. Pardon? Yes, My please. Yes, please. Jim Murray, uh, 723 13th Street. Uh, I heard several things that I just want to want to comment on. Uh, number one, I heard from Mr. Sweeney that he has never had me come to his house and say hello to him. Mr. Sweeney, you go by my well, house every day in my garage. Um, all this comments this one, never, never has he made any gesture of friendship to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I really take it offensive that I would uh, insinuation I might poison a goat or, or we might poison a goat I love animals too I've had dogs my third comment is more constructive if if the motion is really out there to try to work with our neighbors and somebody's gonna have 18 goats and that's a bunch of goats I mean let's face it, or 16 whatever it is mm -hmm. that's a bunch of goats and what what anybody wants to say it stinks now, I'm far enough away that I don't get it too bad. I'm a hiler. But I've been down that hill. It stinks. There's no way around it. It stinks. Now, if Mr. I want, if I'm not supposed to say the name, if the gentleman doesn't want to fix the problem, maybe he could mediate with his neighbors. Maybe we should have a mediator. Uh, I, I can't turn and look at him. I mean, I, I think get together as neighbors and me mediate the problem. Well, let, me, let me interrupt you for one second. He didn't say he didn't want to fix the problem. He's working to fix the problem. So I think we need to give the gentleman some time to, to try to get that done. Okay, but the he does smell have a is not being state. addressed, and it's oh. really awful. Okay. Go ahead. And, you know, instead of this heading to court, which is where it's going, maybe, maybe we could mediate the problem. And I'm directing that at the end. That would be nice. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Anyone else? Stephanie, 791 um, 13th Street. A couple questions. Is it acceptable to dispose of animal waste at the town dump? Hey. They have a compost pile. They do have a compost yeah. pile. Okay. Um, so will there be no investigation or action on the rats? I don't know how you can tell where they're coming from. Well, we have seen the direction they come from. We have witnesses that have seen them running around the pens. I'm not sure how an investigation would start on yeah, that. No. Okay. Um, I do invite you to come to my house before everything is done so that you can understand um, why we're here mm -hmm. and what we're dealing with. Um, also, um, we still didn't quite get a definition on personal use of the animals and pets. Um, what is the ordinance um, for livestock? 
versus personal use or pets. I think Ken said we didn't have one, is that correct? Yeah, he, there was, yeah. yeah, he said that more than once, so there's no... No, there is no, no, we don't they're have allowed. one. Yeah, they're there allowed. They're allowed no there. That's personal use. Ordinance on that, it's... Okay. Pets are personal use or time animals. All right. Personal um, use, use being collecting eggs and milk. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so are the pens permitted to be within 75 to 80 feet of the waterfront? I already can't answer that question earlier tonight. Yeah. I mean, so. Okay, I have one last question. Um, if Ken Paul was advised that they were, Ken Paul was advised that they were not selling um, livestock or livestock products, if evidence was provided showing otherwise, would that change um, your decision and with regard to allowing? Um, this to um, occur with the um well if there's if there's proof then obviously we we have to deal with it as as a commercial um, right as long as that proof came after the fact of the day that mr that the code enforcement spoke to the property owner because right. when he spoke to the property owner he did see the website he spoke to him afterwards everything was taken down so it would have to be proof after those dates after that letter was sent Okay. If he was still continuing to do if he's that. still, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And again, I do invite you over. So I'm going to, I'm definitely, I, I did drive down through there probably a couple of weeks ago. I couldn't, I didn't have the address with me to find the site. So, but I'm going to drive back down again. Donna Davidson, 637 13th Street. It's my understanding from the research that I've done that if the state of Maine has an ordinance that is stricter than the town ordinance, um, then the state of Maine takes precedence for that ordinance. Is that true? Sounds correct. I believe so. I would think so. Then the state of Maine considers goats livestock. There, it's very clearly stated that goats and chickens are considered livestock, not pets. Okay. I'd have to see it in writing, but I, I, not that I, I don't know, believe sure you, you, but get, yeah, I guess that would be good. I see everything in writing. Go so I just thought I would okay. clarify that Thank one. you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good evening, Board. Arnold Murray. Uh, I'd just like to, uh, there's numbers spent around, and they just aren't told what it is. They just say manure, and there's a bunch of manure. Um, I'd like to say that I did some how much manure is produced. I checked with the man manure management for small hobby farms, the state of Pennsylvania, environmental protection, uh, managing sheep and goat manure, um, the federal government natural uh, agricultural library estimating goat and sheep manure production and their nu nutrient contribution to the Chesapeake Bay watershed. I would just like to give you some figures and you can do with them what they were. This is figures for 12 goats. The average goat generates a half to a gallon of milk a day. If that's, if you figure that out and extrapolate that out, goats are dry a few times a, a few, few weeks a year, comes out to approximately 976 gallons of milk from 12 goats. Manure, a hundred pound goat produces four pounds of manure a day. 12 goats times four pounds manure a day equals 17,520 pounds annually. The nutritional value, or, or whatever you want to call it, not nutritional value, but out of that, 3% is nitrogen, 2% is phosphorus, and 1% is potassium. So when it rains, if that's on the ground, whether it's at the dump or not, if, if that's those uh, um, 17,000 pounds of manure are going to the dump, that brush piles on a slope, that's all going to be washing down somewhere. All I'm saying is it's, it's there. How do we deal with it? Thank you. Anyone else? 
<coughs> Shannon Winchell, um, Road Commissioner's wife. Um, just wanted to say that my husband has been elected for three terms. He's served nine years. Um, this is his tenth year, and he's had no problems with the taxpayers, no problems for the last nine. Um, with the new board, it seems like he was given 12 days to do what you asked him to do on the row bridge, um, which I don't think is fair. That's not enough time. Um, you follow what the road committee wants, and then you set a guideline and say, okay, that's what you need to do. And then I also, you know, I, I, I've watched my husband over the years, and I find out that supposedly somebody decided to say that you didn't like the way that my husband talked to you, the board. Nobody sees how you guys talk to my husband. And then somebody decides that my husband is a sexist. I think not. He works with many people, many contractors, many women, and has no issue. But if you want respect from him, you've got to give him the respect back. You're doing a disservice to the taxpayers because it's almost winter time. He's got to get his plow trucks ready. He's got to get everything ready to go. And now you want to worry about the road bridge and having the guardrails and having everything done and then also have flat ground road, which he has been working on like you asked. So now the question is, he's trying to get everything done and you just keep adding more and more and more. And I'm just wondering where you guys fare on that. I didn't know that it was your job to tell a road commissioner what to do. Last I knew they were elected by the town. Shannon, as far as flat ground road goes, I asked him a question and he blew up at me and told me where I could go and what to do. Yep. And how I many asked times one have you question. Him, do you know I have not insulted him? Oh, yes, you have. I've been there when you have. Look, I'm not going to go back and forth about this, but he speaks down at me with his fingers. No. Yes, no. I have asked him to stop pointing kindly. It's what he does. And, and you know what? The town has elected him and for nine years, and he has had no problem with the taxpayers or anybody all else. All I can say is there were taxpayers who asked us about flat ground. There were taxpayers who asked us about road bridge. We go to ask, and he has a hissy fit. No, he doesn't have a hissy fit. Yes, he did. That's your opinion. Well, when somebody I'm screams at me and tells me to shove it up uh, my you-know-what, that's rude. Right. I mean, it's a when we just question. ask the question. Right, because you He's guys are very doing disrespectful to us. You're, you're saying that he's disrespectful to you. You guys have been disrespectful to him. So it goes both ways. You can sit here and say it's he's, one He's way. been asked more than once for the road bridge. The road bridge has been asked, and it's, it's been recorded. We've asked him the probably five times. And that's fine. And he said he would do it. Yeah, um, then you gave him 12 days. 12 days. Listen, well, after had, five times. I'm sorry, but he's had four years to work on that guardrail, according to the state reports. Oh, the and state it hasn't reports, been done. Yes. 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 Yeah. And so he said back in April he would do it. And so here we are in September, a month away from getting ready to plow, we're asking him to put it on his agenda. It was on his agenda, but now you guys but, give him certain time to do but it. But apparently we're not allowed to ask You send an when. email saying you're going to hire somebody else. We should be able to talk oh. with him. We should be able to ask a question without being have a screamed at and hollered oh, and cornered. Oh, it's easy to have a conversation with him. All right. no. Three minutes has gone by. Absolutely not. <laughs> time up. You guys, I'm he just is the saying, you guys hardest are the person to talk to. Service and you will see that. Okay. Yep. Time's up. Thank you. Cindy Hart, Road Committee. Um, two years ago, we started brought up the bridges again. At that point, the Road Commissioner insisted that these were not his responsibility. He had talked to the man under the bridge, and it wasn't his. That's fine with us because the Road Committee had handled the bridges. Um, however, I do think that we've got to take the drama out of all of this, <clears throat> realize that Acton has three failing bridges with no plans, no financial plans, nothing. And if, Jennifer, if you're going over to Wakefield, I'll go over with you. I, I think that would be a good experience. You've got to look at what they're doing with their financing and with getting grants. And perhaps she can teach us how to get the same grants that they're going for. They're able to get FEMA grant money for several, 
and there, in our case, we're probably able to get grant money for West Shore, uh, West Shore Drive from Stream Crossing. The Road Committee will meet next week and we'll get into this. But I'm a little sick of all this drama. There was plenty of time. That letter, the, this year's letter came in in April. That bridge, should have, that bridge should have been cleaned up. There's no use, excuse for that. Every, the Road Commissioner was too busy all summer to get this done and too busy for the last couple of years. Someone else would have come in. We had okay, volunteers. Let's, let's not get into that now, okay? We all volunteers know, we all would have know done it, you, and you, I will stop. We, okay. Okay. Yeah, I think we've heard plenty of this. But so. um, so. Let's, let's pay attention to the taxpayers, too. This is yep. millions of dollars we're yep. talking. I'm going to, uh, you're going to want to hear this. Okay, um, I'm going to need more than three minutes, and because uh, this will be the last time I, t I, I do this. Okay, um, first of all, I never said I was the bridges or the road committees. Okay, I, I don't want anybody else doing my job except for myself. I've done this is my 10 years now. I think I've done my job. I come to these meetings. Yes. Um, I've been agitated for the last two months. The road committee, they uh, continue to press their agenda, which is fine. Um, but over time here, um, when the election came up, I wasn't going to run again. Okay. Uh, people convinced me to do so. I did. I made a mistake. And uh, so, but after the last couple weeks, listen in the road committee, make recommendations that I have to come to them to do projects. I've seen the writing on the wall when it comes to the, uh, um, where my, I've gotten a letter from you guys stating that you can tell me what to do, when to do it, how much to spend, who to hire, who to fire. Um, I don't feel that my job is the same job I ran for 10 years ago. So um, tonight I blew up, been poking the bear, you keep poking it. And uh, tonight I got called a sexist. Um, so I'm making an official tonight um, of October 9th that I am resigning my position as road commissioner. Um, I am not walking into this ha town hall and have to worry about accusations like that because that can ruin someone's life. Um, I just gave up a, a really good opportunity so I can fulfill my job, and I did. And that opportunity has gone by, so I screwed myself because I figured that I had to do what I had to do because the town act and voted me in. I wasn't having a temper tantrum. I am just tired of being poked at. I see things happening in this town hall with people working within the as town employees that I, I, I believe it's not a good it's not a good route we're rolling here. I don't believe I've have had any say in the last three months. I've tried to accommodate certain people here seem to have more say than I do. I'm not gonna be told again that I'm not doing my job. I guess I haven't. Um, I'm not coming up here and winding myself up every Tuesday because I'm the only guy, only a road commissioner shows up for this this crap. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm the only one showing up for this. I'm not showing up no more. You've got my notice of October 9th. I need to be able to get all the town stuff down to the uh, town shed. October uh, 9th or November 9th? What? October 9th and November. October 9th. No. October 9th is yesterday. So that means you, today is October today. 9th. Not nice today. Oh, ne next next Friday. Okay. Because I, I need a week. Um, I am sorry to the taxpayers that voted for me that wanted me to do this. You know, continue doing what I'm doing. But at this point in time, um, I see the writing on the wall, and I'm not going to get accused of stuff. It's too easy to throw that stuff out there, and I'm not going to have my my face pictured all over a newspaper because someone blurting shit out. So. I'm sorry to the taxpayers. Um, thank you. No, I'm disappointed greatly that you're doing that because I, I am. I am, David. 
um, it doesn't, you know, but I understand why. So, okay. Greg Vermette, that's something I didn't want to hear. Like I said, when we were working second shift, my wife and I traveling from Portsmouth back here, the roads that Mr. Winchell was in charge of were the best roads from Portsmouth, Dover, Summersworth, Milton Mills, his roads were the best. We never had any problems. And it drifts up my way a lot. And he had told me, if it's ever drifting, let me know. Give me a call. And I'm really sorry this had to happen. Because yep. as I have said before, it seems though he is always getting picked on. And it's not right. He's got a job to do. And I'm going to miss him. Thank you. Anyone else? Bill Gannon, um, uh, 13th Street. Um, I would just ask that you potentially talk to the people from the planning board that made the zoning ordinances. These ordinances were made extremely strictly to protect the shorelands. Mm -hmm. There are specific things in here about manure and and uh, setbacks, et cetera, that were done by these people. And we should enforce the spirit of what we put in and why we put it in the zoning ordinance. If we have done that, we wouldn't be in this situation right now. Thanks a lot for listening. Thank, Thank you. you. That's why I'll make this brief. Uh, I'm, I'm basically saying I'm done with fighting this issue. It's taking too much of my time. Uh, uh, a couple of comments. I think call, uh, the uh, person at 773 has a lapse in memory. I just wanted to correct. I didn't stop in front of his property three times. I stopped once the second time when I caught him pulling the stakes out of the property. It's a separate issue. It's going to be addressed separately. Uh, but I would ask you, please, on behalf of the entire neighborhood, to pay a visit maybe unannounced, maybe as soon as possible, and you see if you would like to come out there and sit in an area of nice homes. We all work hard to keep our homes up nice. You see if you'd like to sit there and invite relatives and friends up to be driven off by the stench of manure and urine. That's all I'm asking. Please uphold it. Thank you. Thank you. What else? Oh, okay. Announcements. Basketball, October 13th, sign up deadline. Taxes are due October 16th. Le there's a rabies clinic in Lebanon. Where is that being held in Lebanon? Do we know? Fire station. Fire station. That is on the 21st of October. $15 per shot. November 1st. Third. Three. Oh, November 3rd. <laughs> okay. Typo. November 3rd, Library Chile. And chowder cook-off, November 6th, election day, no selectmen's meeting that night. And as usual, oh, and we have the pumpkin carving October 20th at Mary Grant from 4 to 7. So, and as usual, all the meetings are on the website. Do you have anything else? No. Anything else? I'm good. Anything else, Jennifer? No, sir. Nope. Call for I move that we adjourn. I'll second that. Move to second to adjourn. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you.